All right, today I want to go over the wall assembly of the, uh, the demo house before we go a whole lot further. Uh, you've probably, if you've seen the previous episodes, you know what's going on below grade. So above grade, this is going to be quite a bit different than most people are used to seeing. Uh, so for the record, there's nothing we're inventing here. Uh, the, the building science community has been studying the, the ev evolution of housing. It's very different than it was 30, 40 years ago of what we're building. So they're looking at what's working, what isn't, and why, and what we should be doing differently. So this is really, this is us applying their solutions. Um, now, we're not saying this is not the only way to build a wall. It's not the best way to build a wall, but it works. So explain this, how, how this works, and that way you can go ahead and design your own walls knowing the fundamental rules that you should be following to make sure that they're going to perform properly and, and last. So first of all, you probably notice there's a lot of insulation going on here, um, and there is. We have a, a normal, normal stud frame wall, bats in the wall cavities, but the majority of our insulation is outside. It's this eight inches of uh, Roxel comfort board. So the true R value of this wall, uh, not just the materials, but when you factor in all the studs, uh, the actual wall itself is about R47. That's more than double what most building codes require. And a lot of people think we're nuts for, uh, for doing that. But uh, given, like we factor in the climate we're building in, the cost of insulation, the cost of utilities, and then if you think about uh, you know, a reasonable lifespan of the house, this makes sense. Like this stuff pays for itself really quickly. So for the science of what's going on here, uh, Think of your wall as an environmental separator. Humans like about 20 Celsius, 70-ish uh, Fahrenheit, uh, about 40% humidity, give or take, on the inside, but it's not going to be that on the outside. So this wall, your wall is tasked with separating those environments, no matter what's going on outside, to keep it nice and cozy and comfortable inside. Now, you get into a climate like ours here where we get extremely cold winters, um, into the minus 30 Celsius, and then in the summertime, you're going up into the, the 30 Celsius, uh, and ex like up to 100% humidity. So that kind of a climate shift is a huge task to put on a wall to ask it to perform properly and last. Normally, people are used to seeing a wall built, um, a normal 2x6 wall, insulation into the stud cavities, a poly vapor barrier, uh, strapping maybe not, and then drywall. That's kind of what we're used to seeing. Uh, and that vapor barrier is acting in two roles. It's your air barrier, but it's also your vapor barrier. So meaning, and those are two very specific jobs. Uh, vapor diffusion is moisture absorbing into the wall, drying through to the other side. That's your vapor barrier is there to stop that. Air barriers, on the other hand, are tasked with stopping air leakage through individual holes. Those are two very different things. And we often confuse which is more important. A lot more moisture is getting deposited in your walls due to air leakage than vapor diffusion. Uh, check out our video on air barrier for more information on that. So most builders would know instinctively that, uh, at least in a Canadian climate, the vapor barrier goes on the inside of the building. You want it on the warm side of the insulation, and that's right. Uh, but where is that warm side? Uh, we, we design our houses in winter uh, and then we build them in summer, but we, it's like we forget that it even exists because our, because our climate shifts so, so radically between seasons, part of the year that vapor barrier is actually on the wrong side in a way because if you go down to Florida where the hot humid air is on the inside, air conditioned, cool and dry inside, they have the vapor barrier on, on the outside of the wall to stop that humid air from coming in. So for us, we put a poly vapor barrier on the inside and then you think about that, uh, that cool air conditioned dry interior on those hot summer days, the vapor barrier is actually on the wrong side. So what the, the, I say the building science community is proposing and what we're trying to do here is come up with a solution that's more of a year-round solution. It takes all those seasons into consideration um, rather than having you know, like, like snow tires. We take them on and off every six months. You can't do that with your vapor barrier. So we really have to look at the whole year and every season and every challenge your wall is going to face. And there's a lot of different ways that you can 
You can build a wall to deal with that moisture that's a little bit more forgiving than that poly vapor barrier. Um, and what we're actually going with in this case is uh, this. Uh, Benjamin Moore, uh, it's a latex vapor barrier, basically a vapor barrier paint, or more accurately, um, a vapor retarder, because it's slowing the moisture movement. So the, that paint itself is, is stops more than twice the amount of moisture that's required by building code. Um, so it's twice as effective as building code is asking for, yet it's still a little bit permeable to moisture. So in the summer months, you're not, when you get that inward vapor drive, there's a chance for the moisture to breathe through a little bit rather than getting stopped at that poly and then creating moisture problems and condensation inside your wall. With the vapor barrier paint like that, it's actually breathing through to the inside a little bit or drying through where it, it does no harm. So the poly that was doing those two jobs, the air barrier and the vapor barrier, our vapor barrier, we've replaced it with the paint. Uh, that leaves us needing an air barrier. So in this case, what we're using is this, the Delta Vent SA. It's a moisture permeable uh, self-adhesive membrane. Basically stick it on, we'll put primer on the walls first. Uh, the, the barrier goes on tight, so there's no wind pressure pushing it around. It's gonna open up nail holes, stuff like that. And then we've also added, wherever the screws were gonna penetrate, uh, attaching the insulation, these small squares of with a Delta Flex Band. It's this thick rubbery membrane that'll basically seal up around the screw holes. Uh, so that we're not going to get air leakage when we're attaching the exterior insulation. And while we're on that, uh, as you can see, we've got eight inches of insulation, but it's broken up in two courses. What we've done is we've attached the first four inches with one set of strapping vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal, so that the additional four inches here can get attached vertically. That's leaving basically a, a drainage plane and airspace in the interior to let water drain out um, and, it can, and moisture uh, to be able to rise and, and leave. So natural air convection is going to have cool air coming up. So we've got an opening through here, and as long as it can leave in the top, that's going to leave your walls the ability to dry out. So the way that we've attached it here, uh, as you can see, we've got the four inches of insulation attached with one set of strapping and then an additional four here. The reason for that is basically it's thermal bridging. If Had we had a screw penetrating the an entire eight inches of insulation right into the wall assembly, those, this, the metal's a conductor, so it's gonna act as a, a heat conduit, basically just sucking heat right out of your house. Uh, so this is the reason we split it up in two. Four inches of insulation attached to the wall and then offset with the second set with another set of strapping attaching to that, that first strapping there. Um, and I say that, that breaks up that thermal bridge. Had we not done that, it reduces the overall our value by probably about 30, 40 percent. So just way more than is tolerable. Uh, just it, it's not even worth bothering putting it on if you're going to have that much thermal bridging through it. And there's, there is other ways to do this. We, we chose the strapping. Like, we're building better houses. We're, we are in, in exterior insulation. This is finding its way into building codes. People are getting that it's worth the investment in insulation. So, and the best place to put it's on the outside. Uh, what we've done here was a couple of reasons. One was to try and keep it within the realm of what's familiar to builders. Insulation strapping is, uh, but it was a little bit more work. Um, there is other ways to do it. As I say there's there's fiberglass clips that you can install right on the wall, sort of sandwiches the insulation in, so it's not a thermal bridge. They're pretty expensive. And, but having done this already, I don't know, it's a toss-up. Uh, a lot more labor this way, lower costs. So let's say, just a different way to try it, see what works for you. And then having that wall assembly like that with that airspace in the middle, we were a little bit concerned that there was going to be a uh, convection of air inside it that leaves a, a cavity of air here. So if there's any leakage, there's just a, ri a risk of, of, of it causing heat loss. So what we did actually was we got the second... Uh, Delta Vent S membrane, the black one here on the outside. In the wall, it's actually it's taped underneath to this one and then sealed again at the top. Same thing over all the window openings. So it's the drainage plane if any moisture gets into the walls, any water leakage, but at the same time it acts as an additional air barrier. Now, when we were actually, we had to seal up the house and finish our ceiling, we were doing a, our, our blower door test. That's where the house is depressurized 
so you can measure air leakage. A fan uh, installed in the door blows out and gives you a chance to go around the house and you can find all the little holes and fix them. Uh, it's a great opportunity to really improve your, the air tightness of your house. So when we did this, our blower door test, it, we only had the gray membrane on. We didn't have this one on yet. And yet even with that, we were already about five times more airtight uh, than the average house being built today. So overall, what we end up with here is it's a wall that's much better insulated than most new home construction. No poly vapor barrier, uh, something, a the paint on the inside, so it's a little bit more breathable, so it's more durable. And, and we're way more airtight than other houses out there. So we've got a super insulated wall. It's going to be durable. It's going to last. Um, and frankly, it's a, it's, it makes financial sense because the added insulation that we're putting in the wall, yeah, it's going to cost you money, but the payback period isn't 25 years down the road because you're saving energy instantly. So, I mean, for example, if it's going to cost me an extra $1,000 a year on my mortgage to build a better house, and yet I'm, if I'm saving $1,000 a year on utilities... I'm really not paying any more, so it's really worth looking into beefing up the exterior insulation of your house. For more information on any of the stuff we're talking about here, uh, check out Eco Home Building Guide. Uh, go to the keyword search box, air barriers, vapor barriers, insulation. We've got a guide in there that sort of walk you through the different characteristics of different materials, how important things are, what, what's important, what really isn't, stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, hope it works out for you. Thanks for watching.